Okay, another video coming to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai Bar Shem Rakar Kodash. All praises and glories definitely do. Shalom to the elect, which begins with the 144,000. So you see the title of this video, as promised. I said by the end of the day, I would try to get this video out there. So all praises and glories due to Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai for allowing me to do so. Uh, the title of this video is, Does the Bible Condone Theotokos? Does the Bible Condone Theotokos? Does the Bible Teach Theotokos? And Theotokos is a Greek word, right? Uh, let's go to the meaning of the word, Theotokos. This is from Google. Theotokos. Okay. Uh, tomato, tomato, <laughs> right? Theotokos, Theotokos, that's how I say it. So the definition is as follows, mother of God, okay, as in Mary, uh, which Mary was the mother of the only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, which indeed Yahweh Shai was and is a God, but he is not the God, as in the Most High, Yahweh. Now, especially the Roman Catholics, they believe that uh, Yahweh Shai was the Most High himself in, in, in fleshly form, which is totally ridiculous because even Yahweh Shai, let me show you a scripture which totally destroys that. Okay? And, and you know, the RCC, the Roman Catholics, they, they believe that heavy. They believe that the son of the Most High, the only begotten son, was the Most High, is the Most High. And this is what the son of the Heavenly Father said, right? Which, like I said, destroys the belief that the son is the Father. Okay? I'm about to show you the scripture right here. This is the book of uh, John the 10th chapter, the 29th verse. These are the words of Yahweh Shai. That's why you see these words written in red. My father, and he's, who's he talking about? Was he talking about his biological father, Joseph? Nope. He was talking about his heavenly father, which his name is Yahweh, right? He said, my father, which gave them me, he's talking about the uh, disciples, which became apostles. They were given to the son of the heavenly father, the only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, they were given by the Father. Okay, that's why they followed uh, the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father. Except for one who betrayed him, and that would be uh, Judas Iscariot, which Judas Iscariot was replaced by Matthias. Okay, and you can find that in the book of Acts, the first chapter. So the scripture says, My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Okay. And then as you read on, it says, I and my father are one. What does that mean? One in understanding. One in the same mindset. But they were separate or they are separate entities. Now, in this scripture, John 10 and 29, it says, my father, which gave them me is greater than all. Now, there's an actual scripture, which I thought that was the scripture, but. I'm going to get it for you, where Yahweh Shai actually said, my father is greater than I. That's the one we want to get, because that brings it home, okay? And we're going to read it right now. As a matter of fact, this is a good one right here. Let's read that John 5 and 36, but I have... I have greater witness than that of John. He's talking about John the Baptist. For the works which the Father have given me to finish. See, he's putting that distinction. He's putting that separation. He didn't give himself the works. Now, the, the Father gave it to him. The, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. For the works which the Father have given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father have sent me. And he was saying to the Jews, 
This is how you know the Father had sent me. This is how you know I'm that guy, the only begotten Son, written about in the prophecies, that I'm that dude because I have the power that the Father gave me. And Yahweh Shai did manifest that power with the miracles that he did and the great works that he did. There's a scripture in the book of John that says all the works that Yahweh Shai did, not even the earth could contain the books. Uh, that's somewhere in the book of John 20. Let me see if I find it. All right, John 20, <clears throat> which shows you that Yahweh Shai did a, a lot of works, man. Okay, John 20, I think it's around the latter verses. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, so, uh, which one? Written in this book. Uh, let me see. Uh, John 20 and 30, and many other signs truly did Yahweh in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Now, there's one scripture where it says, I suppose the books could not. Okay, the word books is in there. Maybe, maybe I'll try John 21. John 21. Yeah, this is it. John 21 and 24. This is the disciple which testifieth of these things and wrote these things and we know that his testimony is true he's talking about john all right john the um, the same john who became the john uh, john the revelator who wrote the book of revelation when he was sent to the island of patmos right um now here's the point the 25th verse and there are also many other things which yahweh did the which if they should be written every one i suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written amen which means so let it be so there you go that proves what i just said remember the scriptures say prove all things right so i just proved it so yahweh i did a lot of works man okay so now i want to get the one it's time to get the scripture greater than so we can make move the we can make the point and move on. Okay. Uh, here it is right here. This is it. John 14 and 28. So once again, this is a scripture among many that proves that the Heavenly Father and the Son is a separate entity. Because uh it says this, John 14 and 28, ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. He was speaking to his disciples, which became apostles. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father. He's talking about his heavenly Father, Yahweh. For my Father is greater than I. Now, how you get around that? Those of you that believe the Son is the heavenly Father. You err not knowing the scriptures. John 14 and 28 in NLT, let's read that. Remember what I told you, I am going away, but I will. What does he mean he's going away? I mean, he was going to the spirit world, which he's, he's, he's been there ever since. We're waiting for him to come back patiently and do what he got to do, which is destroy the society and set us, set us Israelites up, man. Set us back up in the kingdom, man. Take us back to our land, the land of Jerusalem, destroy the society, bring us back to the old ways. Oh, yeah, man. We're waiting, man. We're waiting patiently. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. There you go. This, this is what we've been waiting for. If you really love me, you would be happy that I am going to the Father. And even now, as I speak, he, he sits at the right-hand side of the Father. So how the hell can they be the same entity? No, they're separate entities. How can he be the Most High and at the same time sitting at the right-hand side of the Most High? And even the, 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 the prophet uh, Stephan, the martyr Stephan, right before he gave up the spirit because he was being stoned, he, he, saw, he, he saw that in a vision. He saw what? He saw the heavenly father Yahweh sitting on his throne and Yahweh Shai standing right next to him, the right-hand side. And he screamed, he screamed when he saw it too. He screamed it. 
and and they 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 picked up even more stones and stoned him because they said he was he committed blasphemies in saying that. But the man was he was saying what he saw, Stephen, as he was being put to death. So that's why a lot of these Israelites out, out here can't get this knowledge of truth. Do you know why? Because a lot of them are guilty of that wickedness, man. Wickedness against the prophets. Is it not written, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets? That's these same niggas you see out here with their pants below their ass. Back in their past life, they, they had a hand in killing the prophets, man. So that's why they're catching all that hell. And they're, gonna, they're about to catch even more hell. Okay, uh, it is right here, Acts 7 and 54, Stephen put to death. It says, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. I'm talking about them wicked Jews that Stephen was cursing out. All you have to do is read the uh, beginning of the seventh chapter. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, looked up steadfastly into heaven. So he sees a vision. And saw the glory of the heavenly Father, and Yahawashai standing on the right hand of the heavenly Father. So that once again, they are separate entities. Now listen to what he says, and said, "Behold, behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of the heavenly Father." So how can they be the same person? Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. Right? So there you go. We don't have to read anymore. And then and them same spirits that are guilty of that, they're back today. Now, guess who was among them? The Apostle Paul, at that time he was known as Saul, he was among them, but he did that in ignorance. That's why he received mercy, the Apostle Paul. And it was Stephen, he made a statement. Stephen said, Lord, lay not the sin to them. As a matter of fact, as he was dying, this is what he said, the 60th verse. So by him, by Stephen saying that through the Spirit, the Apostle Paul was covered because he did it in ignorance. But he was present when Stephen was being stoned. Okay, Acts 7 and 60, and he kneeled down, meaning Stephen, and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep, meaning he died. Okay, so by him saying that, the Apostle Paul, that sin, because indeed it was a sin that, he, that the Apostle Paul, well, Saul, he, when he was Saul, that he partook in, but he did it in ignorance. He really thought he was serving the Heavenly Father, you know, and his only begotten son. Until, you know, the rest of the story, he was knocked off. And when you go into the eighth chapter, I believe it was, it speaks about how he was knocked off that horse on his way to persecute more Christians in ignorance. He did it. He was knocked off his horse, and that's when he was converted. I'm talking about the Apostle Paul. Okay? Yeah, so there you go. So let's get back to the to the topic. All right, let's get back to the topic. So we're talking about theo, Theotokos, which the definition is as follows. Mother of God uh, as a title of the Virgin Mary. All right? So we... Be because she was the mother of Yahweh Shai, right? And the RCC, the Roman Catholic Church, they believe that Yahweh Shai was the Most High, as in Jesus Christ, that's what they call him. They believe he was uh, the Most High, the son of the Most High and the Most High at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, and I just destroyed that. Uh, therefore, Mary, you know, Mary is divine and Mary should be worshipped. Hence the title Th Theotokos. Okay? As a matter of fact, under the section, people also ask why Mary is called Theotokos or Theotokos. Mary is the Theotokos. And what's the definition? 
the mother of God. That's the literal definition. That's from the, the Greek Theotokos, right? Mary is the Theotokos, the one who gave birth to God. <laughs> this is what the, and when it says God, as in the Most High. Now, you know what destroys that? Uh, the book of Daniel, where it speaks about the Heavenly Father being the Ancient of Days. The Heavenly Father himself didn't have no mother, man. The Heavenly Father had, had no beginning and has no end. So how the hell can Mary be his mother? Again, they err not knowing the scriptures. And let me get it to you. Daniel 7 and 9. It says, look at the subheading. The Ancient of Days, which is another title for the Most High himself, which his true name is Yahweh. The Ancient of Days reigns. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. That's talking about all the kingdoms were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit. That's the Heavenly Father sitting on his throne. Like, like we saw with the account of Stephen. He was sitting on his throne. And Yahweh Shai was standing right next to him on his right hand. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Whose garment was white as snow. So he's wearing a white garment. Pure white garment. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. Which tells you right there. What, uh, what, what so-called ethnicity he looked like. Which is that of a so-called black man. A so-called Negro. The hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. It's talking about the chariots. Now the point is, it calls him the Ancient of Days. Meaning he has no beginning and he has no end. Okay, so, he, so there's no way he could have had a mother. So no, Mary was not the mother of, of God. As, as is defined by the word Theotokos. So that takes us back to... The uh, question of this video, does the Bible condone Theotokos? The answer is no. Okay? So, again, Mary is the Theotokos, the one who gave birth to God. This single word sums up the meaning of Luke's phrase, mother of the Lord. He was, uh, he, she was the mother of Yahweh Shai, which is the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father, as we all are sons. She was not the mother of the Most High. The Most High Himself, the Ancient of Days, He has no mother because He has no beginning and He has no end. Okay, and for me to explain that to you, I can't. You just have to take my, take, well, you have to take my word for it, but if you studied, you'd know that for yourself. Okay, this is where faith comes in. And you know what the Bible says about not having faith in the Heavenly Father. You know, it's impossible to please the Heavenly Father without having faith in Him. Hebrews 11 and 6. Uh, for, him that, for he that come to the Most High must believe that he is. And indeed he, and indeed he is. Because his name, Yahweh, means he is. Alright, so there you go. This single word sums up the meaning of Luke's phrase, Mother of the Lord, Luke 143. And represents a counterpoint to John's teaching that the word was made, was made flesh which the word is a title for Yahweh Shai, and indeed Yahweh Shai was made flesh. All right. Usually the term is translated into English as mother of God, and the God they talk about is the Most High, which is totally ridiculous. This is under the section, Do Catholics Believe in Theotokos? What Catholics believe about Mary can be sum summarized in five key teachings. And once again, it's, it's an example of, of the worship of, of women woman worship as in worship mary and the, the bible never taught us that we are to worship mary yahweh shai himself mary's son never said that his mother should be worshiped okay what catholics believe about mary can be summarized in five key teachings theotokos mother of mary is the mother of god perpetual virgin as an untouched even while she was pregnant which is total madness Perpetual virginity, Mary was a virgin before, listen to this, this is what they believe, and vocab is one of them. Mary was a virgin before, during, and after the birth of Yahweh Shai. Now, depending on the Hebrew word, virgin can mean a young woman, as in Ayalama. 
But virgin in the English can also mean a perpetual virgin, as in Bathwala. And Elder Apostol just did a different, um, just did a, di a video spotlighting the difference between Ayalama, which is found in Isaiah 7 and 14, and Bathwala, which is found in uh, one example is Genesis, the 24th chapter, where it speaks about uh, Rebecca, the wife of uh, Isaac, okay? Which we use that example. I used that example in the video I, I had did. And um, also um, Captain Tazariak in the debate he had with Vocab concerning that topic, you know, the uh, perpetual virginity and all that. He, he used that scripture concerning Rebecca uh, Genesis, the 24th chapter. Okay? As, as uh, Rebecca was described before, Rebecca had sex with Isaac. She was described as being Bathwala, which is a perpetual, which not a perpetual, but a virgin, that a woman that was never touched or had sex. The Hebrew word to denote that is Bathwala. But the Hebrew word to denote a young woman of marriageable age, okay, this is a, a young married woman. She could be married or not married. The Hebrew word to describe her is Ayalama or Alma. All right, which is really Ayalama in the Hebrew, okay? So going back to this, it says, Mary was a virgin before, during, and after the birth of Yahweh, which is virgin in the sense that she was untouched. No man ever had sex with her. She was untouched, which is totally ridiculous. Immaculate conception, Mary was conceived without original sin. This is the madness that they believe. So clearly you see that Theotokos is nothing but the worship of women. Now, women are not supposed to be worshipped. Okay, the only one that's supposed to be worshipped is Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. Women are not supposed to be worshipped. As a matter of fact, a woman's not even supposed to usurp authority over the man. Okay, let's get that. So Theotokos is, um, matter of fact, a good example of Theotokos, if you know the history, and Elder Apostle Ramab, he always goes into this. Uh, you go back to the Council of Ephesus. The Council of Ephesus, 431 AD. That's when it was established that Mary is divine and she should be worshipped. So, hence the uh, example of Theotokos. Okay? Um, what is it that I want to get? I had a scripture in mind to get. Okay, kind of, kind of, um, kind of escaped me, but maybe it'll come back to me. Uh, Mary was conceived without original sin, which, which, oh, I remember now. Usurp, usurp, the Wali Haabashim Yahushai, usurp, and, you know, as we get older, man, it gets harder and harder to remember everything you need to remember. But this is why we speak according to the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we speak according to the Holy Spirit. It's what, what uh, the Heavenly Father told Moses, for it is not you that speak, but the Spirit that of your Father would speak if in you. So that's how we speak. First uh, Timothy 2 and 11. So the, the bottom line is women are not, in, no woman, not even Yahweh Shai's mother, the one you call Jesus Christ, not even his mother was supposed to be worshipped. And like I said, there is no scripture to support Theotokos. There's no scripture to support where Yahweh Shai said or told his disciples, which became apostles, told them to worship his mother. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't exist. 1 Timothy 2 and 11, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Uh, that cuts that worship the woman nonsense. But I suffer not a woman to teach. So she's not even supposed to teach. I mean, she can teach. There's a scripture where it says she can teach the younger woman how to love their husbands, how to, you know, how to be sober, how to love their husbands, etc. Womanly things, if you will. What, especially when they're young. You know, the elderly woman teach them. But as far as teaching these scriptures and, and teaching about the, the kingdom of the Heavenly Father, that's not the job of the woman. That's the job of the man. And, and, in particular, the prophets. That's the job of the prophets, the apostles, the teachers. 
not the job of the woman. Okay, so that's why it says, but I suffer, 1 Timothy 2 and 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. So when you listen to the doctrine of Theotokos, uh, Mary, so-called Mary, mother of God worship, it's like she's usurping authority over the man. It's like we're not, we were not told to worship Mary, man. It's, again, there's no scripture that supports that. We were not told to worship Mary, man. Nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. There you go. Which shows what? Subjection. She's under the rule. The word subjection literally means under the rule. Sub means under and jack means to rule. So when you put it, the word together, and that's from the Latin. When you put it together, it literally means under the rule. So the woman by nature is under the rule. Under the rule. And let me remind you that the word woman means servant. Servant. That's what it means. So Mary was what? She was a young woman. She was a young servant. That, that her job was to serve and bear children. To serve her husband Joseph and bear his seed, bear his children, which he came out the line of David. All right? She was not put on a pedestal to be worshipped. So Theotokos is, is nothing but a cunningly devised fable. Theotokos is nothing but hearsay or hearsay, okay? Hearsay. Uh, then it goes on to say, 1 Timothy 2 and 13, For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived, so much for the Theotokos, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And another thing too, the, the, the woman is not on our level, man. No way, no way, no way, no how. Okay, the woman is not on our level. As a matter of fact, you busy calling Holy Mary Mother of God, the woman is supposed to worship you. How about that? How's that for a wild new concept? Huh? You steady talking about, especially you, you, you crackpots in the, our, the Roman Catholic Church talking about when you do your so-called prayers, you, <laughs> you doing the gang symbols, you're crossing your... You know, crossing your, your, you know, you put your hand over your head and then cross, do that cross. We call it the gang symbols. <laughs> you're doing that gang symbol. At the same time, you're talking about Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, man. You're out of your mind, man. First Peter, um, what is that? The third chapter. A woman in hell. A woman is supposed to worship us. We, we are their gods, not the other way around. First Peter 3 and 5. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women, the holy women, also who trusted in the heavenly father, right, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. How about that? That's 1 Peter 3 and 5. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. So it's, it's the other way around, all right? The woman is supposed to worship the man, not the man worshiping the woman, okay? Because we are their gods, all right? We are their lords, as you're about to see. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, see? Who's, and, uh, who is Sarah? Sarah was the wife of Abraham, right? Calling him Lord, whose daughters you are, as long as you do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Okay, so there you go, man. Let's read the NLT, the fifth verse. This is how the holy women of old made themselves beautiful. They trusted the heavenly father and accepted the authority of their husbands. Uh, that's a, come on, man, that's a cold cut. I'm talking about some Theotokos. And no, Mary was not special, not in a sense that she should be worshipped. Not even the son of the Heavenly Father said that she should be worshipped. If, if, if the Heavenly Father wanted us to worship Mary, her own son would have said so. Her own son would have said, look, and my mother, you are to worship her. There's no scripture that supports that. So Theotokos is BS. Okay. I could end the video right there, but I have some scriptures that are prepared. Let's go to them. These are examples that shows you that Theotokos is just that nonsense.
let's do this. Let's, let's uh, do the old split screen. Oh, come on. I hate when it does that. I don't know why the hell the blue letter does that. I may have to take it off my phone and re-download it. I think it's corrupted. Let's try that again. There you go, it's still there. Yeah, it is what it is, man. All right, so let's go to the book of Luke. You know, you can never have things your way. You, you, you brothers know what that's all about. Luke, the 11th chapter, the 27th verse. This ain't Burger King. You can't have it your way. Luke 11 and 27. What's that say? And it came to pass... As he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice. Now, this is a woman saying this, this uh, madness. A certain woman of the company, by the way, who's the he that was speaking? Yahweh Shai. So this woman was being rude. She interrupted Yahweh Shai. There's a scripture where it says, your woman ought to keep silence in the churches. That's 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. And when you read this passage here in Luke, it shows you why they should keep silence in the churches. Because what this woman said was, was, was stupid, was dumb. Okay? That's why Yahweh Shai checked her. Luke 11 and 27. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee. So again, this sets the stage for what? Woman worship, the worship of Mary, Theotokos. Okay? So she said, Blessed is the womb that bear you and the paps which thou hast sucked, which is another word for the breasts. Right? So blessed is the womb and blessed are your breasts. Again, woman worship. Woman worship. That's what that is. So listen to the response Yahweh I gave her. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of the Heavenly Father and keep it. So that, that checked the woman right there. He didn't subscribe to his woman being his woman, his mother being blessed, her womb being blessed, and her breast being blessed just because he came out of that womb and sucked those breasts when he was a little baby. Talk about Yahweh Shai. All right, he didn't subscribe to that. It was as we just saw in that passage. Luke 11 and 27. And he was speaking, a woman, this is in the NLT. As he was speaking, a woman in the crowd called out, which she was out of order. She was out of order. She, 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 she was supposed to have her mouth shut. And he was speaking, I keep saying that. As he was speaking, a woman in the crowd called out, the heavenly father bless your mother. The womb from which you came and the breasts that nurse you. Again, she was trying to set the stage for her mother, for, for her mother, for his mother to be worshipped. And Yahweh Shai wasn't with that. If Yahweh Shai was with his mother being worshipped, he would have said, yeah, you know what? You're right. That's why you should worship my mother. Her name is Mary. Yahweh Shai replied, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of the Heavenly Father and put it into practice. So obviously that woman, was, she wasn't hearing the word of the Heavenly Father. She's too busy shooting off her mouth, talking about Yahweh Shai's mother, that she should be blessed. Right? And when I say not she should be blessed, meaning I meant to say she should be worshipped. The scriptures does not say that. She was blessed. Mary was blessed. Even the angel said that in the, in the, in the salutation, the greeting. When the angel Gabriel came to Mary, the angel Gabriel said, Thou art highly favored, thou art blessed. All right, so Mary was blessed. There's no doubt about that, to have a son like Yahweh Shai. But the difference is Mary was never meant to be worshipped. That's the difference. As you worship the Heavenly Father or His only begotten Son. That's the difference. So that was Luke 11 and 27. That destroys Theotokos. Another example is John 2 and 4. Now this is when... Yahweh Shai was at the wedding and listen to the response he gave his mother, right? And again, it makes the point if his mother were, was to be worshipped, he wouldn't have replied to his mother the way he did. 
And here's the example, John 2 and 4. But let's read the first verse. Miracle at Cana, or Cana. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Yahawishai was there. And both Yahawishai was called and his disciples to the marriage. Oh, by the way, that's a cold cut to vocab because the part of the scripture where it says before they came together, that was talking about the wedding, the wedding ceremony. And vocab has a hard time accepting that. It was customary before a woman got piped down by her husband. Um, back then, it was the custom of there's, they had a marriage feast before they made it official, okay, which is, took place in the nuptial chamber, okay, the coupling chamber, okay, as part of our history. There's a section, when you Google it, there's a section that comes up that says the ancient, the ancient marriage rites of ancient Israel, or the marriage rites of ancient Israel, that's what it says, the marriage rites of ancient Israel, how things were done back then, concerning marriage in the land of Israel. Totally different than what you have now. Okay? So, John 2 and 2, let's read it again. And both Yahweh was called and his disciples to the marriage. Third verse. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Yahweh saith unto him, they have no wine. So they ran out of wine at that feast, that wedding feast, you know? So, uh, Let's read that again, the third verse. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Yahawishai saith unto him, they have no wine. So here's Mary trying to flex her authority. Going to tell Yahawishai, hey, they ran out of wine, they ran out of wine. So listen to the response, Yahawishai being an austere man, remember that. Listen to the response he gave her. Yahawishai saith unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? So wait a minute. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. <laughs> Yahushua didn't have that attitude. All right? Yahushua never said that his mother was to be, to be uh, put on a pedestal and to be worshipped and praised. He never said that. Look at the response he gave his own mother. Now, did he love his mother? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not saying he didn't love his mother, but he, he put his mother in the proper perspective. Okay? She was kind of out of order to tell him when to use the, use the power, which he ended up using the power anyway at that wedding. That was the first time he did a miracle. The first of his many miracles was done at uh, the wedding in Cana of Galilee. Yahweh Shai saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? That's a pretty harsh reply. Mine hour is not yet come. There you go. Uh, matter of fact, um, this is the NLT version. Dear woman... That's not our problem, Yahweh Shai replied. My time has not yet come, see? Which, indeed, his time did come because he, he ended up doing the miracle anyway. But he had to put his mother in order first. That's the point. So that shows right there. That's another example, a subtle example, but nevertheless an example that the Bible does not con condone Theotokos. And finally, Matthew 4 and 10 uh, let's get that, Matthew 4 and 10. Yeah, okay, this this is uh, where Yahweh Shai says to Satan, who was tempting him, you know, when, when Satan took him to the mountain, who was tempting him, Yahweh Shai said this, who are the only ones to be worshipped? Let's read, Matthew 4 and 10. Then said Yahweh Shai unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shall thou serve. So you're, you're not supposed to worship no Mary, mother of God, and all of that. That's nonsense. Furthermore, we're supposed to worship the Heavenly Father and the Only Begotten Son. Because you can't get to the Heavenly Father but through the Only Begotten Son. As, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, one scripture comes to mind. Uh, uh, Yahweh has, has now been made the mediator between us and the Father. So yeah, you're supposed to worship Yahweh like you worship the father because he, he's the one the heavenly father set up and you got a lot of israelites that got a problem with that we're in the book of first timothy 2 and 5 let's read that right quick and we're going to close this lesson because we made the point first timothy 2 and 5 for there is one power and one mediator 
between the heavenly father and men, the, the man, Yahweh Shai, and the men is talking about is Israelite men, beginning with the elect. Yahweh Shai is our mediator, our go-between, our lawyer, if you will. That's what mediator means. All right, so I believe I have made the point. Like once again, if you were edified by this video, drop me a line in the comment section. Let me know. And as usual, we go to the next one.